Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Bell 525 reaches another milestone, closing in on certification. NASA and ULA launch Parker Solar Probe. And community group questions skydiving operation near California wildfire. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's August 15th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Bell 525 Relentless Program is closing in on anticipated 2019 certification, as yet another milestone was completed as a part of a series of rigorous test protocols. The Bell 525 program recently completed hot weather testing in Yuma, Arizona, at temperatures up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as high altitude operations to density altitudes of 14,000 feet. We successfully completed hot weather testing last week in Yuma, Arizona. The aircraft performed very well, and we are gathering test data for certification," said Troy Caudill, chief test pilot of the Bell 525 program. Earlier this year, the Bell 525 completed cold weather testing at temperatures down to minus 37 degrees Fahrenheit in North Manitoba, Canada. The current status of the flight test program has culminated in over 1,000 hours of total test time, with speeds exceeding 200 knots to airspeed at maximum gross weight limits. The aircraft performance reportedly continues to meet or exceed all design specifications. The Bell 525 is preparing for FAA flight test participation in quarter 4, 2018, and continues to make strong progress towards planned certification in 2019. After the break, Arion Supersonic coming to Los Angeles. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Joan Report, our website or podcast, just email to news spy at aero news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Arion is recruiting talent at the director and lead engineer levels for the AS-2 supersonic aircraft at an event planned for September 21st in Los Angeles, California. The company is seeking experienced program directors and subsystem engineers. Arion is developing the AS-2 supersonic business jet in collaboration with GE, which is developing the first new civil supersonic engine in more than 50 years, and with Lockheed Martin, a leader in military supersonic flight. The first meeting of a Georgia State Senate committee to study a state takeover of Hartsville-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta will take place August 22nd. The idea of a state takeover of the airport is opposed by Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms and Delta Airlines. But committee chairman State Senator Burt Jones said that there have been ongoing problems with federal investigations and other controversies, some related to ethical issues. The first step is being taken to develop a set of streamlined new maintenance regulations for Australia's general aviation sector. New maintenance regulations will minimize the regulatory burden on general aviation, keep compliance costs as low as possible, and be based on the best practices of other leading aviation nations. Civil Aviation Safety Authority is commencing development of the new general aviation maintenance regulations 
by asking the aviation community for views on current challenges and opportunities. Feedback is also sought on existing regulations in the United States, New Zealand, Europe and Canada. A bipartisan bill introduced in the U.S. Senate would establish flight training services to assist veterans who want to become commercial airline pilots. The American Aviator Act, which was introduced by Senators John Hoven and Senator Tammy Baldwin, will authorize grants through the FAA to support training opportunities for veterans who are not already military pilots. Well, that's it for today's Share Around on the Patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. NASA's Parker Solar Probe launched Sunday to begin its journey to the sun. The spacecraft will transmit its first science observations in December. Roughly the size of a small car, the spacecraft lifted off at 3.31 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on a United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket from Space Launch Complex 37 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. At 5.33 a.m., the Mission Operations Manager reported that the spacecraft was healthy and operating normally. The mission's findings will help researchers improve their forecast of space weather events which have the potential to damage satellites and harm astronauts on orbit, disrupt radio communications, and at their most severe, overwhelm power grids. Over the next two months, Parker's solar probe will fly towards Venus, performing its first Venus gravity assist in early October, a maneuver a bit like a handbrake turn that whips the spacecraft around the planet, using Venus's gravity to turn the spacecraft's orbit tighter around the sun. Throughout a seven-year mission, Parker Solar Probe will make six more Venus flybys and 24 total passes by the Sun, journeying steadily closer to the Sun until it makes its closest approach at 3.8 million miles. Parker Solar Probe will set its sights on the corona to solve long-standing foundational mysteries of our Sun. After these messages, community group questions skydiving operation near California wildfire. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Teros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. It's the epitome of not in my backyard nonsense and ignorance. Questions have been raised about a skydiving operation by a community group which wrongfully claimed that a skydiving aircraft may be interfering with efforts to fight the Holy Fire in the Cleveland National Forest. The FAA initiated an investigation after the Aero Ignorant Group, which runs a social media page named What's Up Lake Elsinore, questioned why Skydive Elsinore was operating while firefighting aircraft were scooping water out of the lake to fight the 22,000 acre wildfire. But FAA spokesman Ian Greger reported that a CAL FIRE captain said the skydiving flights were not interfering with a firefighting effort. They were always cooperative, Gregor said. He said the skydiving company seized operations to accommodate the fire crews while they were scooping from the lake. Skydive Elsinore General Manager Josh Hall said that they were staying out of the way of the firefighting aircraft. If we were inhibiting them, they could shut us down, but the air boss has been thankful and told us we were easy to work with. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.